Friends, our tale begins in 1912, when two-term president Theodore Roosevelt was running for an additional third term. Now, as Roosevelt was stepping out of his automobile to deliver a speech, an assassin ran up and fired from five feet away. Two bullets penetrated Roosevelt's muscular and tattooed chest. Roosevelt proceeded to open his jacket, revealing this bloody shirt. He then exclaimed, it takes more than that to kill a bull moose. Uh, Roosevelt went on to read his 54-page speech for one hour and a half as blood gushed out his chest holes. Why? Because the man was obviously a badass. We're talking about a guy that had ridden a horse into battle, busted up the railroad truss, and had gone blind in one eye while boxing in the fucking White House. Uh, it's true. Uh, Roosevelt seemed unstoppable, yet he still lost the 1912 election to Woodrow Wilson because sometimes election results don't go our way. Uh, yeah, Roosevelt was absolutely devastated by that loss, and he dealt with that devastation the only way he knew how, through physical hardship and danger. Uh, Roosevelt resolved to travel deep into the Brazilian jungle. He would cross the mighty Amazon, but he wouldn't do it like some tourist punk, funk, you know, going down a well-trodden trail. Oh no! He resolved to go down a completely unknown river, the Rio de Duvida, the river of doubt. So cold because nobody knew where it led or how many hundreds of miles of jungle terrain it crisped and crossed. This was a black spot on all maps. The river had only been discovered in 1909 by Colonel Candido Rondon, Brazil's greatest explorer. Now in his 1909 expedition, Rondon had stumbled upon the river, the start of the river, but he had to turn back because at this point nearly a quarter of his men were dead. Uh, Rondon's expeditions were actually infamous for their very high casualty rate. Uh, despite this, or maybe because of it, uh, Roosevelt decided he would team up with Rondon. They would traverse the unknown river together and put it on the map. Uh, when friends and her family uh, heard of Roosevelt's plans, they were horrified. They were pretty sure that the 55-year-old ex-president with no jungle exploration experience would not be coming back alive. Uh, to this, Roosevelt responded, I have had my full share. And if it is necessary for me to leave my bones in South America, I am quite ready to do so. Uh, uh, on February 27th, 1914, after two months of rigorous overland jungle travel, Roosevelt reached the opening to the River of Doubt. He was accompanied by his 24-year-old son, Kermit, by Colonel Rondon himself, uh, and uh, yeah, he had, uh, <laughs> he had like 19 other men by his side. As they paddled off in their seven dugout canoes into the unknown, Roosevelt began to realize for the very first time that his campaign, his expedition was in serious, serious trouble. You see, the expedition's quartermaster had been this man, Anthony Fiala, who would go down in history as the most incompetent explorer of the 20th century. Uh, Fiala had led a 1904 expedition to the North Pole that ended in total disaster. Uh, he and his men got stuck in Arctic ice for two cold years, uh, mostly due to his incompetence and poor, poor planning. In a similar vein, as Fiala was picking out supplies for the Roosevelt Rondon expedition, he packed plenty of fancy teas and sweet savory jams and lots of condiments and containers full of olives, uh, but he packed very little meat. And by the time the food shortage was discovered, it was way too late to turn back. Uh, Roosevelt began to realize that he might run out of food before he ran out of river. Uh, he would have to go down the river of doubt as quickly as possible in order to, you know, not starve. Uh, but there was a problem with going down the river quickly. This is an actual photo taken during the Roosevelt Rondon expedition, uh, the River of Doubt is not a friendly river. It twists and turns to some exceedingly violent rapids. Uh, normally, protocol dictates that when you're exploring an unknown river, 
and you encounter rapids and you don't know where the fuck they go, you park your canoes on the side of the river, lift them up, and carry them to calmer waters. Uh, this takes time, particularly if your canoes, like Roosevelt's, weigh 800 pounds each. Uh, Roosevelt didn't have the luxury of time, so he began to cut corners. Uh, they would encounter rapids, and Roosevelt and his men would go, well, they don't look that bad. Maybe it'll be okay. It'll be fine. And no, that's not the way this shit works. As Roosevelt found out on March 15th, as he watched in absolute horror when a canoe carrying his son Kermit, two porters and weeks worth of food, plummeted over the edge of a 30-foot waterfall. Roosevelt rushed to the bottom of the falls and discovered the canoe shattered. There was nothing but debris and the rocks, no bodies to be found. Uh, Roosevelt's son would eventually reemerge from the murky waters, as would one of the porters. Second porter, Simplicio, was never seen again. Uh, he was the expedition's first casualty. Uh, he would certainly not be the last. Uh, the very, <laughs> it's not funny, people died. <laughs> well, <laughs> our very next morning, while the men were busy trying to rebuild the lost canoe, uh, Colonel Rondon went for a little jungle stroll with his closest companion, his dog Lobo. Uh, Lobo heard the howl of a holler monkey in the trees and he ran into some bushes and he let out a sharp yelp and then when Lobo uh, came out of the bushes there were two five foot long arrows jutting out his sides. Lobo! Uh, uh, Rondone could hear from the depths of the jungle the sound of human whistling and chanting. He took his rifle, fired into the air, and ran the fuck back to camp, uh, as one would do. Uh, this marks the first recorded uh, interaction between Westerners and the fierce indigenous Sintalarga tribe. Uh, the Sintalarga are not a nice the nicest of tribes. Uh, they have been known to massacre intruders by the dozens as recently as 2004. Uh, at the time of the Roosevelt drone and expedition, they also practiced ritual cannibalism. Uh, when they killed an enemy in the jungle, they would section off the edible parts, arms and legs, and the soft flesh over the belly. They would grill it up of an open fire and take it home for their wives to slice and cook. Uh, according to Sintalaga culture, the bigger and girthier the enemy, the more honorable it was to consume him, which is why the 220-pound ex-president would make for a most honorably delicious prize. Uh, so after the encounter, Rondon would have guards posted at the camps each and every night, yet not even the armed guards could defend from the jungle's most insidious killer, the mosquito, carrying tropical disease. On March 28th, Roosevelt began to experience the bone-chattering chills and burning fever associated with malaria. Uh, his illness was further exasperated by a cut on his knee that got infected and by the constant hunger. At this point, the expedition was down to like two, three crackers a day for... <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were literally starving. Uh, the constant hunger led to conflict. On April 3rd, two porters got into a fight over some rations. One of the men picked up a gun and shot the other dude straight through the heart. Uh, Roosevelt was shivering and sweating in his tent when he heard the gunshot ring out. He realized what had happened, grabbed the nearest rifle, and ran out looking for the murderer. Roosevelt was hold, like overheard to pronounce, and I quote, he who kills must die. Uh, the murderer, fearing, uh, fearing the worst, ran off into the jungle, and Roosevelt was unable to carry out his summary execution. Uh, the leaders of the expedition made the call to leave the man behind, abandoning him to what was surely a grisly and lonely jungle uh, death. Uh, the horror of all this violence basically obliterated the rest of Roosevelt's health and strength. The very next night, he collapsed in total uh, delirium. In a semi-conscious state, he began to recite over and over and over again a single stanza by the mad poet Calvin Coleridge. In Xanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure dome decree where off the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to men, down to a sunless sea. Uh, the next morning at dawn, Roosevelt came to, and he realized he did not have the strength to carry on, and he did not want to be a burden to his men. 
Uh, Roosevelt always carried vit with him a vial filled with a single a lethal dose of morphine, and he decided to swallow the poison now. He called Rondon into his tent to make his goodbyes and said, the expedition cannot stop. On the other hand, I cannot proceed. You go on without me. Uh, Rondon looked Roosevelt in the eyes and calmly replied, let me point out that this is called the Roosevelt Rondon expedition, so we cannot possibly split up. Uh, Rondon and his men convinced Roosevelt that if he offed himself, they would be forced to carry his heavy rotting carcass through the jungle back to civilization. And Roosevelt uh, hung on. Uh, by some miracle on April 15th, they encountered some rubber tappers on the lower edge of the river with whom they could trade for food. I cannot emphasize enough that they would have been fucked without that. They were out of food. They would have been dead. So through sheer luck and sheer willpower, the men survived. Uh, Roosevelt and Rondon successfully mapped the River of Doubt, all the 400 miles it covered, and the River of Doubt was renamed by the Brazilian government to the Rio Roosevelt. Uh, this is a photo of the renaming ceremony, and I want to point out how thin and haggard Roosevelt looks. The man had lost over 50 pounds over the, the expedition, and his uh, health would never recover, and five short years he would be dead. Many historians believe directly as a result of the expedition. Upon learning that in 1919, Roosevelt had passed on in his sleep, the sitting vice president was heard to say, death had to take him sleeping, for if Roosevelt had been awake, there would have been a fight. Uh, I mean, no. So these, these are powerful words, but to me, they don't quite ring true because as we all know, out on the river of doubt, Roosevelt had nearly taken his own life. I mean, look guys, the man was undoubtedly one of the biggest badasses of history, yet even he was nearly destroyed, nearly broken by the infinite horror of the jungle. And yet he persevered, he carried on, he reached his river's terminal point, which is why I would like to raise my glass and offer up a toast to conquering our rivers and doing away with all internal doubt. Cheers! <laughs>